Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. This is Logic 301, Piano Arithmetic. Now, in this video we're going to be looking at varieties of successorship. So, something that is important to understand as we move through these definitions is that they are completely arbitrary. We could have defined zero as the set containing the empty set instead of the empty set. It would have made some future axioms more complicated to construct, and it might have meant that there are some mathematical concepts we couldn't really represent in set theory, but it would have been sufficient to get us to the basics, which is where we're going right now. Fortunately for us, basically everyone that does set theory defines zero as the null set. So while in principle there may be some distinction here. In practice, we don't really need to worry about it. However, the next concept that we need to define, successorship, is a different matter. This is not just a single set, but rather a function that gets us from one set to another. Remember that a function is a type of relation, where each member of the domain corresponds to exactly one member of the range. Remember that functions are classes of ordered pairs. For example, uh, the function f could be the class of the ordered pair 1, 2, the ordered pair 2, 3, and the ordered pair 101, 102, where every one of the first values for each ordered pair is unique. In other words, each of the first values corresponds to only one of the second values. This means that for any value that we put into the function, there is always only one value that will come out. Using the example above, the f of 1 equals 2, f of 2 equals 3, f of 101 equals 102 and so on. If this is confusing, check out our videos on functions, relations, domains, and ranges for, from the last month for more. All to understand that when we're talking about successorship, we're going to be defining a class that is a set of ordered pairs that is a function such that each number in the domain only corresponds with one number in the range. There are also several different kinds of notation that you may see used to denote successorship. The successor of zero might be written as s parentheses, zero, close parentheses, s zero, zero plus, or zero plus uh, superscript. We are going to generally use s parentheses x to denote the successor of x, though we may switch to sx in cases where there are a bunch of successorship relationships lined up in a row. In other words, 5 is the successor of 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 0. It, it's easier to write sssss0 than all of that with a bunch of parentheses. So, in the next two videos, we're going to look at two different formulations of successorship. Remember we said that these things can be formulated in different ways. We didn't have to define zero as the null set. Most everyone does, but we didn't have to. In terms of successorship, there are a couple different ways that people have defined it in the past. One of these versions is going to be following Zermelo, and one is going to follow von Neumann. We're going to use the von Neumann method going forward, because it's more common and it's easier to translate into higher order set theory and mathematical questions, though it is going to be a little bit more complicated. That said, it's important to note that, there, that neither definition is right. They're just easier or harder to work with in certain contexts. So with that, up next, what is Zermelo successorship? Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.